Hello everyone. Today we are going to learn about operating costing which is also known as the service sector costing. Who generally uses the service sector costing? Obviously the people who are in the service industry. Now operating costing abhi tak jo humne padha hai the various kinds of costing like the process costing ya hamara ho gaya marginal costing or the cost sheet this generally deals with direct material direct labor direct expenses which are used in the manufacturing industry matlab agar main ye pen bana rahi hu to isme kitna direct material lagega direct labor lagega but when i am doing when i am giving a service for example agar mera mera ek beauty salon hai so there i am not going to manufacture anything i am providing service so in that case hum uska costing kaise nikalenge or how are we going to deal with those industries so for that we have operating costing that is service sector costing ye generally which which kind of industries use this cost, this method of costing it is generally used by the the travel operators such as the bus operators airlines railways ye generally operating costing use karte hain or industries which are uh, industries which are in the hotel business or hospitals or any general service sector industry can use this but generally ye sare jo industries hain wo use karte hain now let us see how exactly operating costing works so i'm taking an example of a bus service let us say i am a bus operator and i am running a bus one bus i am running from point a to point b and then to point c now the distance so my bus starts from point a every day it goes to point b from point b it goes to point c then again from point c to point b and then again point b to point e this is known as one round trip so like this the bus is making three round trips every day and it is operating for 25 days in a month let us say the distance between point a to point b is 5 kilometers and the distance from point b to point c is let us say 2 kilometers so the total the bus is actually traveling 7 kilometers this side and 7 kilometers this side can you tell me how many kilometers is the bus traveling in a month in a month the distance traveled would be 5 plus 2 7 kilometers one way since it is making round trips it would be into two sides now this is the distance for one round trip it is making three round trips every day into now this is the distance every day it is traveling for 25 days in a month so that comes up to 1050 kilometers so this is the distance traveled by the bus every month let's go ahead now let us say that the bus has a seating capacity of 50 passengers and generally the occupancy is on an average the occupancy is let us say 60% that means the bus is occupied 60% on an average every time when the bus is operating so 60% of 50 passengers that would be equal to 30 passengers that means at any point of time when my bus is on the run that time i have 30 passengers in the bus theek hai now let us say my cost of operating the bus in a month is let us say rupees 
11 lakhs. Now, I have to recover this from the passengers through fare. Now, do you think only this I will recover from the passengers? No, I will have to add my profit also. So, let us say I add a profit of rupees 1 lakh. So, what should be my total takings? My total takings from the passengers in a month is rupees 12 lakh. That means I should collect 12 lakh from my passengers. Now, let us say I have three passengers. I have three passengers. Passenger X. Passenger Y. And passenger Z. Now this passenger is traveling from A to B. That is how many kilometers? 5 kilometers. This passenger is traveling from B to C. That is equal to 2 kilometers. And the third passenger is traveling from A to C. That is equal to 7 kilometers. Now you tell me the fare of all the three passengers should be same or different. Obviously it should be different because each one is traveling different kilometers in the bus. So obviously the person who is traveling less will be paying less. The person who is traveling more will be paying more. Now as a bus service operator, I want to know what should be the fare for, for a person who is traveling from A to B, for the person who is traveling from B to C, for the person who is traveling for the whole kilometers. Similarly, the same charges would be from C to B, from B to A and from C to A. So now I want to know what would be the charges for these passengers or in general what would be the charges from A to B, B to C, C and A to C. Okay, so let us understand one term first. This term is known as passenger kilometer. Ma'am, what is a passenger kilometer? If one person is traveling for, if one passenger is traveling for one kilometer, that is known as one passenger kilometer. Now, we know that our average occupancy is 30 passengers. That means, if my bus is traveling from A to B, I have 30 passengers. 30 passengers, okay, or if I revise it, let us say this is 1 kilometer. This is 1 kilometer from point A to this. This is 1 kilometer. In this 1 kilometers, I have 30 passengers sitting. So, I will call it 30 passenger kilometers. Every kilometer traveled by the number of passengers will give me the passenger kilometers. Why are you doing that ma'am? We'll learn about that later. Now, let us say, so I want to calculate how much is the passenger kilometers for this bus in a month. So, this was my example. So, my passenger kilometers here would be Now, every kilometer I have 30 passengers. 30 passengers. And these 30 passengers have traveled for 1050 kilometers. So, the total passenger kilometers that I have is 31,500 kilometers. We are going to use this later. Before this, this is a simpler way of calculating the, uh, the, the fare for these uh, passengers. But I will take you through the longer way. Now, this is the total takings that I need to collect from the passengers. Can you tell me what would be the takings per kilometer? That means if my bus is traveling for one kilometer, how much collection should come 
uh, how much collection should be there in my box. So, every kilometer, my takings should be total takings that is 12 lakhs divided by the total kilometers that is 1050 kilometers. So every kilometer I should be able to collect rupees 1142.8586. This much I should be able to collect for every kilometer. In every kilometers, how many passengers do I have? On an average, I have 30 passengers. So from every passenger, every kilometer, I should collect rupees 1142.86 divided by 30 passengers. That is equal to rupees 38.09. Now, you have calculated that if one passenger is traveling for one kilometer, he should give you rupees 38.0 now. What exactly did you do? First, you divided 12 lakh by 1050 kilometers. Then you divided that by 30 passengers. Didn't you divide 12 lakhs by the passenger kilometers that is 31,500, which will give you the same figure that is rupees 38.09. That is what we got. So instead of first calculating how much should I take for every kilometer and then divide it by the number of passengers each kilometer uh, the bus is carrying, we can directly divide it by the passenger kilometers. So this much I need to collect if one person has traveled for one kilometer. This person X has traveled for how many kilometers? For five kilometers. If he travels for one kilometer, I should collect 38.09. If he travels for five kilometer, I should take rupees 190.45. So this would be the takings for distance between A to B. The takings would be 190.45. Now, if the person is traveling for 2 kilometers, it would be 38.09 into 2. That is equal to 76.18. So, this would be rupees 76.18. If a person is traveling from A to C, that is this whole kilometer, this distance, then it should be 38.09 into the total kilometers that is 7. That is rupees 266.63. So the distance, if they are traveling for this distance, it should be rupees 266.63. Now we can say, that the fare collected is fair enough. So for every kilometer, every person travels, we are going to collect this. So further, I'm going to tell you what exactly steps did we follow. So the first step that you are going to do under operating costing is calculation of total cost. How much cost you are incurring? If you are calculating annual, then the annual total cost. If you are calculating monthly, then the monthly total cost. The second step would be calculation of takings. In case you have profit, then you have to calculate how much amount you need to take from the customers. Third would be calculation you can also combine these two steps of passenger kilometers. Now, when we are into the, into the transport industry, it is passenger kilometers. When you are into the hotel industry, it would be 
bed nights bed nights in case you have hospitals again it would be bed nights so it depends on the industry to industry what would be the calculation the fourth one would be calculation of takings per passenger kilometer or bed nights anything now like this we have got 38.09 next what did you do to calculate the fare you multiplied it with the kilometers the distance multiply with distance to calculate the fare so this would be our steps under operating costing similarly here when uh, you, when you are into the hotel industry or the hospital industry that time what happens you don't have to calculate you don't have to multiply it with the distance that time they will give you the various rooms for example uh, if you are into a hotel or into a hospital you have deluxe room you have single room you have uh, emergency rooms all that rates would be different so it depends whether they want to charge it at 2x at 3x all that information will be given to you in the question i hope this was uh, understand uh, i hope this uh, you could understand the explanation in my next video i am going to take an example for bus operation and i will try to take on airlines as well in case you need an example on hotel and hospital please let me know i will create a video on this as well thank you so much